Not only do we work in a God-given context, we work with a God-given community. We see back in chapter 1 that God created humanity, both male and female. And the fact that God created humanity this way is in reference directly with all the other work commands that God gives us in Genesis 1, 26 through 31. And looking back at Genesis 1, 31, God saw all that he had made, and it was very good. Evening came, then morning, the sixth day. We see God creating an entire universe, placing humanity within it with tasks to accomplish. We have assigned work within the brand new creation. This is the way God designed it, and God calls it very good. We see God call the new creation, before sin has entered into it, very good. This includes a creation that requires humanity to accomplish the God-assigned tasks, the work of ruling, subduing, being fruitful, multiplying, and filling. God's conception of good does not exclude work. It includes work. Work existed before sin. Work is not a punishment. It is part of our God-designed nature. We are intended to be workers. The only thing about the new creation that is not good is seen in Genesis 2.18. Then the Lord God said, It is not good for man to be alone. I will make a helper as his complement. First and foremost, let's talk about why. It is not good for man to be alone. Humanity is created in the image of God. God is a trinity. God is three persons so completely united that they are truly one being, one entity. If the God we are created to be like is a united community, then why should we be surprised that it is not good for man to be alone? So how does God remedy this problem? God creates the man a helper. It is fascinating that the word used to describe God's remedy for man's aloneness is helper. Wouldn't lover be a better word than helper to describe the relationship between man and woman, Adam and Eve? We quite often look at that as the first romantic couple, the first marriage. But it's also kind of in terms of the first work team. God gave Adam a helper to solve his problem of being alone. In the good creation, before sin entered the picture, Adam had work that he could not complete alone. He needed help. Needing help is not a sign of failure, but part of how God created us. We were not designed to work alone. We were made to work in community. Having work that pushes us beyond our own capabilities into community is still a viable part of a very good creation. For a couple of summers during college, I worked for a landscaping company. While working there, we developed a saying, no one weeds alone. The saying had two meanings. One was a directive that you never sent anyone to do the mind-numbing task of weeding by themselves. If weeding needed to be done, it was to be done as a team. Everybody weeded. But the saying also developed from the observation that no one weeds alone. If you sent someone off to weed by themselves, they would quickly succumb to the boredom and slow down, sleep, rest, or get distracted by something else. Weeding is just a minuscule example that we were not made to work alone. Adam and Eve were the first community. And out of that community, out of that man and man's helper, comes every social institution, every work team, every baseball club, every other environment where there is more than one of us doing something together. That is who we are. We were made to work in a God-given community.